going to introduce you to one of our, uh, our guest speakers now. Um, I'm really, we feel really fortunate to have uh, Fiona join us. Fiona Smith-Hale, she's the Chief Knowledge Officer of Ingenium, which is the organization that runs the, uh, the uh, Science and Innovation Museums for the, for the Government of Canada. In her role as Chief Knowledge Officer, she's involved in the planning and, and management of, of all the knowledge resources, which kind of sounds like content to me. She's recently been very involved in the uh, GC Docs rollouts in, in these museums as well, which is you know, the Government of Canada's electronic document management system. And they have a lot of kind of very cool things on the go. So Fiona, come on up, please. Thank you. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you, Fred. Thank you, Thank you Fred. And, and, uh, Happy to be here. Before you, before you get started, let me, let me ask you a question. Just tell us what you see as one of the biggest changes you've seen in the last five or ten years, let's say, of, uh, in your area. Um, for sure, the, the, the biggest change I've seen is in our um, information management culture. Mm -hmm. um, it has completely changed. It's transformed from um, before content server days and uh, after content server days. It's quite, quite significant. And you'll tell us about that. I'm going to tell you. Very good. That. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. So I'm really pleased to be with you here today to um, share our story of digital transformation at uh, Ingenium, Canada's Museums of Science and Innovation. I'm going to share some of our experiences, our lessons learned, and highlight um, how the platform in just seven years has become a key component um, in our digital foundation. Um, Ingenium oversees three of Canada's national museums, the Canada um, Agriculture and Food Museum, the Canada Aviation and Space Museum, and the Canada Science and Technology Museum. You can see her mandate is in part to foster scientific and technological literacy throughout Canada. I'm not going to read you the mandate, but you can see it there. Um, suffice to say that Content Suite or Content Server provides a safe, accessible digital space for our staff to work, and it's critical for us. Um, it helps us to meet our mandate and to manage our cultural heritage effectively. So this slide gives you a snapshot of our collection and the public that we reach. Um, it also gives you some insight to the breadth and depth of the content that we generate and manage at the three museums. So there's some interesting numbers here for what we do. You can see there's 156,000 3D artifacts. Think planes, trains, automobiles, tractors, um, cameras, and so on. Um, we also have approximately 2.1 million um, 2D artifacts from the library and archives, so negatives, um, um, technical drawings, and so on. So we create exhibitions. Um, we create and host traveling exhibitions. We run a membership program. We have volunteer programs. Um, we create game apps, we loan artifacts, um, we are a crown corporation in the government of Canada, um, therefore we have our own human resources department, uh, communications and marketing, finance, um, and so on. Interestingly, we manage a farm at the uh, Canada Agriculture and Food Museum, right in the centre, in the heart of Ottawa, and we also have an active runway at the Aviation um, and Space Museum. So clearly we have a lot of diverse content that we have to manage and it's critical that it be well managed. So our story of digital transformation essentially begins um, in 2005 when we did an information management audit. We found that the handling of information was really inconsistent across our organization. We had inadequate tools for managing the information, um, especially the diverse streams of content and particularly unstructured content, so st um, content that wasn't in databases. We had no business rules. This is kind of embarrassing, actually. We had no business rules, no standard practices. Documents were maintained in all sorts of different locations in various formats. So of course, the implication for this is that you have corporate memory loss. You have content silos that are created. There's concern that you're not meeting your legal obligations. And as well, um, staff were spending inordinate amounts of time trying to find their content. Um, and if they did find their content, they didn't know if they were using the right um, version or not. I'm um, sure you can relate to that. So following, um, following this, um, in 2000, late 2009, 2010, um, we worked with an expert to create an enterprise content management roadmap. Um, we, we worked with staff across Ingenium to create this roadmap. Um, and you can see the different systems that we have there. Um, content server was implemented um, late fall, um, early 2012, ran across until the spring summer of 2013. We onboarded approximately 270 staff during that time period. We also have a web CMS, and in 2016 we started the implementation of our digital asset management system, Media Manager. 
In the green, you'll see digital archives and open documents. Digital archives is an online web portal that can, contains a subset of our archival assets that are stored in Media Manager. It runs on a Creative Commons license framework, and it has a collaborate function. Open documents um, runs off of Content Server, and it is also an online web portal, and it contains a subset of the documents that we manage in Content Server. So you can see um, that Content Server was the first system that we implemented, um, and of course, um, sometimes being the first is not easy. Um, and we realized very early on that, that this, we were introducing a really fundamental change to staff and how they managed, how they managed their content and how they ran their day-to-day -day, um, work lives. So indeed, changing our information culture was one of our biggest challenges. Um, because ultimately, staff didn't really understand um, things like um, their email messages, if they contained business decisions, that they, those emails had to be kept and they were a record um, that needed to be managed by the IM office. So we managed to turn this around in a couple of different ways. We updated our information management policy framework. Um, and this outlined um, how we managed, or how we were to manage our documents, our digital assets, and our emails. It was also really important, um, as it showed very solid senior management um, support uh, for, for our process and for our implementation. We used a phased approach um, when we were implementing it, so we um, brought on uh, like business um, units at the same time. We created an information management advisory um, community of practice to promote um, user buy-in, awareness, and so on. And we worked with IT so that the system was seen as being um, really robust and reliable for staff. It, it, was, it was on when it needed to be on for staff. We worked with HR as well to integrate some of our IM practices with, with what they were doing. So an event in HR would trigger um, a training event for us if, if there's a new hire. Um, we, would, we would hear about it and we would make sure the person was trained um, th very early on um, in their career at Ingenium. So we did do a lot of training in a lot of different formats. Um, and essentially we worked to um, foster a culture of collaboration and information sharing and, and openness. So we created a few memes to kind of illustrate the uh, culture change issues we were facing. Um, for example, Finding your document or finding your information proposal dot doc in a shared network drive is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, people really liked shared network drives at the time, even though they had problems with the um, uh, in integrity of the information and understanding the versioning and so on. So a word of advice if, um, to any of you who might be implementing an EDRMS anytime soon if you have shared network drives, make them read only. Um, that was one of our lessons learned. Um, Staff will come up with their own solutions when they're faced with a lack of standards and guidelines. Um, our records office doesn't look quite like that, but <laughs> there's no cages. <laughs> no cages. We do let our records manager come out of the office. Um, yeah. These are actually, all these images, by the way, are all um, from Media Manager. So we all found them by Media Manager using metadata. So I'm really pretty pleased about that. Um, so Ingenium in 2019. We did it. We implemented the Government of Canada standard EDRMS. We integrated it with our email system. So now we have a trusted repository for the majority of our documents. Um, it's, a form, it's a critical element in our business continuity planning. Um, information is available. It's findable. The search function is great. Um, we're, we're also better as an institution at recognizing the value of our information and realizing that it can be reused in different ways, remixed. Um, that was one of the, the biggest lessons learned, actually, um, that when we brought down our information walls, um, people could see what other people were working on, um, and we became much more um, horizontal instead of content siloed. So we have seen staff um, work in a more open fashion and, and in an open by default fashion. And continuous change and improvement is now part of our culture. And we have truly lowered our information walls. So speaking of information walls and lowering them, I talked to you earlier about open documents. And that is in our information portal, information management portal, um, where some of our documents from Content Server live, some of our documents that are um, unpublished, unclassified. Um, we do this transparently um, and proactively in an open by default manner. 
Um, we do it to share and create new knowledge and to allow people to work with our content in their own way, in their own time. And then we want to encourage people to participate um, with our cultural heritage. So in conclusion, in 10 fast-paced years, it's gone really quickly, um, Content Server has become a critical cornerstone in our digital foundation. Um, it's fundamentally changed, as I was telling Fred earlier, it's fundamentally changed the information culture at Ingenium um, for the better. And as you can see, it is one of our major building blocks that um, we can use and it makes, well, it, that makes other things possible. Um, these are the other, some of the things um, we're looking at, but there's, there's much more. So we can create new ways for people to um, interact with our content. So we're excited to be here and learn about what's new and some of the things that uh, we were hearing about earlier today. Excited to hear about that and see how we can apply them in our situation. Um, I very much look forward to that. There's, there is a lot to look forward to here. Um, I thank you for your attention um, today. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference. I hope everyone learns a lot. And um, I'm around for the rest of the week. If people have questions about our museums or about some of the projects we've been working on, I'd be happy to um, talk with you or email me. I really want to thank Fiona for coming up and doing this with us. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Fiona. Yeah.